hello nice to have you into this lesson into this lesson we shall be considering oscillation and we will be looking at the third part of the topic we've considered the first part as well as the second part so the third part will be a continuation of the second part uh, of the topic so you can check up on the video uh, to see uh, the previous video on the first part and the second part uh, that is very important for you to be able to understand uh, this third part of the topic well in this uh, top part of the topic we will be considering a vital thing in the second video i mean the second part uh, i asked a question and we're able to look at type of um, damping as, uh, as uh, we talk of light damping heavy damping critical damping and uh, we're able to see how each of them um, you know play out in terms of oscillation i mean in terms of the movement of an oscillator then we're able to look at the graph but meanwhile towards the end of the video i asked a question a salient question and I asked us to pause and think on that against uh, today's lesson and the first question I asked was that can we maintain the amplitude of an oscillation that was the first question can we maintain the amplitude of an oscillation well for this question you might be tempted to say it is not possible simply because practically we can we can't have an oscillation with a constant amplitude and obviously that is actually true based on what i said in the previous lesson which is the first part of the topic that as far as a free oscillation is concerned which is an oscillation that has to do with constant amplitude that practically speaking ideally it's not workable as in it's not fixable meaning that practically we can have an oscillation maintaining a constant amplitude because some other factors will definitely influence the amplitude of the oscillator either by decreasing the amplitude maybe due to damping force or some other factors and that is actually true to that extent but in the case of this it's not true why because there are other ways we can make the amplitude of an oscillation to be maintained or to be constant how do we do that that's that should be the question now how is it possible to maintain the amplitude of an oscillator or of an oscillation now all i just need to do knowing full well that for a body to be set into an oscillatory motion there is an application of energy or force it is that force that we call the driving force so the force applied makes the oscillator to move to and fro. Now, when the force is withdrawn, like no more force is applied any longer, but the object is still moving depending of the, on the initial force that was applied on it. Obviously speaking, the oscillator will tend to decrease its amplitude why due to air resistance and some other factors but how can we now maintain the amplitude of the oscillator i mean the initial amplitude of the oscillator when the driving force was applied now it's very simple all i just need to do is to consistently apply a slight amount of force or energy on the oscillator if that is done then the amplitude of the oscillator will be maintained consistently 
That is only on the condition that an external force is applied to the oscillator. And that external force must be commensurate to the point that it must give the exact or approximately equal to uh, the initial amplitude of the oscillator. So, in a nutshell, it means the amplitude of an oscillation can actually be maintained if we apply a slight amount of force consistently. Those, that is the only condition. And if that is done, the oscillation is no longer a free oscillation since there is an application of force. Because a free oscillation should not be influenced by any external or surrounding factors. Now, the second question I then asked was that can we increase the amplitude of the oscillation? Now, looking at the explanation I gave to this first question, it's very obvious that we can actually increase the amplitude of the oscillation. How? Of course, all I need to do is to step up the amount of force I exert on the oscillator. If I increase the amount of force, in this case now, the amount of force will gradually be increasing. And as the amount of force gradually increases, the amplitude of the oscillator increases in the same manner. Knowing full well that force exerted is always directly proportional to the acceleration of the object. And knowing full well also that acceleration is negative uh, omega square then x maximum, which is maximum displacement and if we had a maximum displacement is also amplitude so definitely there is a relationship between the exact force as well as the maximum displacement which is the amplitude so if i increase the exact force then obviously the amplitude will also increase along line so in a nutshell Force is the main determinant, or energy supply is the main determinant of increase in the amplitude of an oscillation. Now from here, we are going to consider some vital things, knowing full well that I'll be able to discuss those two questions. So definitely, if an oscillation can be influenced by a force resulting into an increase or maintaining of its amplitude, then we can say that there is what we call forced oscillation. So we can say there is something, well, that I mean, there is a forced oscillation. And this is actually the third type of oscillation I gave in the first video. When I said there are three types, I said we have free, I mean, yes, we have free oscillation. And the second one was damped oscillation. Here is the third one, which is the forced oscillation. So we'll be looking basically today considering force oscillation forced oscillation so the question is what is forced the oscillation well forced oscillation is a simple harmonic motion mind you i've said it uh, before in the previous video that oscillation must obey simple harmonic motion the defining equation of simple harmonic motion so definitely all oscillation has to be simple harmonic motion if they obey that defining equation so a first oscillation is also a simple harmonic motion but in this case it is driven externally by a force with a large amplitude okay so we are going to see some key factors to note when defining the word forced oscillation. 
First of all, is the word simple harmonica motion. Simple harmonica motion. That is one of the key points that must reflect in your definition. Then it is being driven by external force. So it is driven externally by a force. And the result of the application of the external force will give us a large amplitude. I've explained that uh, during the introduction to this uh, uh, lesson today. Okay, so increase in the force exerted will result into increase in the amplitude. So the more the force, the larger the amplitude of the oscillation. So these are the three basic keywords that must be noted when defining the word oscillation. So well, let's see an example of forced oscillation. Yeah, we have a, a cool example of that. A simple example is a good, uh, I mean, is a forced oscillation uh, of a child swing, okay? Forced oscillation uh, of a child swing. Uh, some of us are familiar with a swing. When you place a child on a swing, the child remains there as far as no force is exerted. Until force is supplied, the child begins to move in the direction of the swing or in the direction of the force exerted on the swing. Okay, so in this case, Tie swing is a good example of forced uh, oscillation. Let's see uh, uh, this diagram. You can see these two guys, these two uh, kids, you know, trying to enjoy themselves uh, on the swing. One is supplying the force, and the other one is enjoying the the move, the I mean, the dynamic movement of the swing. Now, if we look at these two, these two kids, you will notice that the one driving the other one, which is this guy, okay, is the one supplying the force. While this guy, which is this kid, is the one being driven. So, in other words, the one supplying the force is taken as a driver, which who, and the driver function is to give a periodic driving force so the driver is meant to be supplying force to the oscillator the oscillator in this case is this kid on the swing now this kid on the swing with the swing is referred to as the driven okay and uh, the driven is simply the oscillating system okay because it is the driven that is responding to the amount of force exerted by the driver now if this key withdrawn is periodic driving force okay for some time what that will be noted is that this key this other key with with a face cap we tend to come back to stop it will, it will tend to come back to stop because as time goes by some external factor will be acting on the swing and the key okay and that alone will slow down the motion and slowing down of the motion will result to decrease in the amplitude of this key and the swing okay and it will come to stop so for us to maintain the amplitude then this other key have to keep supplying a driving force periodically okay so in other words what i'm not simply saying is the fact that the swing oscillates with a natural frequency now, I need you to know that 
every oscillator has its own natural frequency. Okay, so they oscillate at, at their own natural frequency. And uh, uh, an oscillator with a natural frequency can only exhibit that, I mean, its own natural frequency when be displaced or released. Okay, is until they have been displaced or released, they begin to exhibit the natural frequency. They move with the natural frequency. Now, the question is, what well, is it a natural frequency? A natural frequency is actually the frequency at which objects vibrate when free to do so. When free to do so. So, until they have been released, okay, then they exhibit that frequency, which is the natural frequency. Okay. So, however, as I've said earlier on, the amplitude decreases due to damping. Air resistance, it could be humidity, I mean humidity, it could be any other factor. So the the four, I mean the amplitude decreases due to damping when the driving force is withdrawn. At this point, we want to see the fact that amplitude can increase or can be maintained or keep constant. And with, to do that, energy is provided by a periodic driving force from the driver. I have explained this at the beginning of the video to answer the question that we that I mean that was sent I mean that was pushed to us that can an amplitude be maintained or can it be increased and this answers the question uh, logically based on what we have on this diagram. So if energy is provided periodic by the driver, then the amplitude of this key with face cap will increase or will be kept constant. Now, in this case, where the driving or forced frequency is equal to the natural frequency of the driven, what we are going to attain is what we call a maximum amplitude. So a maximum amplitude will be reached on the condition that the driving frequency, which is the frequency from the driver or the first frequency, is equal or equivalent to the natural frequency of the driven or of the oscillator. Or of the oscillator. Now, I need you to know that the driving or the first frequency of the oscillator is the frequency at which the object is made to oscillate by the driver. Okay, so the driving frequency is associated to the driving force. Why the natural frequency is associated? to the oscillator so we need to get a difference clear now when this thing happen i mean this phenomenon when this phenomenon happen what occur is that the two curate another effect which is called resonance so resonance is more or less when the natural frequency of the driven or of the oscillator is equal to the driving frequency by the driver. So take note of the fact that this occurrence obeys resonance. Now, at this point, we shall be considering the concept resonance. What is resonance? Now, resonance can only occur when the frequency of a periodic driving force on an oscillator 
is equal to the natural frequency of the system or of the oscillator to give a maximum amplitude to give a maximum amplitude now at this point you need to take note of some key point in the definition because when you are defining the word oscillation i mean the word resonance this key point must reflect if they don't reflect you have only simply say something out of out of out, out of no sense okay so we are going to see those factors the point one the first key point here is the fact that the frequency of the driven the frequency of the driven force the frequency of the driven is equal the frequency of the driven of the driven of the driven force and the natural frequency the natural frequency must be equal it must be equal then the result of that equality is maximum amplitude so those ones have alighted are the key point, the salient point that must reflect in your definition to earn you your full mark. Now, summarily, what I'm trying to say from this definition is the fact that the driven force, mathematically, F equals natural frequency, F naught. Now, we can explain this by using a graph. Let's consider the graph. Here I have the amplitude. Why on the horizontal axis we have the driving frequency? Now, I want to relate how the amplitude and the driving frequency will play out on this graph. Now, knowing full well, from my definition at first, I said when you increase the driving force, there is a corresponding effect on the amplitude, so the amplitude increases. And knowing full well that every driving force, now, the driving frequency is in another way also corresponding to the amplitude. So increase in the driving frequency will result in increase in the amplitude since the driving frequency depends solely on the driving force. Now, let's consider this graph. As the driving frequency increases from zero, obviously there is an increase in the amplitude. As I'm moving rightward, the amplitude is increasing upwardly. Now, at a point, the driving frequency would then be equal to the natural frequency of the oscillator. And at that very point, where that, when that happens, the amplitude becomes maximum. That is, the highest amplitude is obtained. Now, if I go on and increase the, the, uh, the driving frequency, then there will be a decline in the amplitude, meaning that the maximum amplitude will be overcome. So it will be great. And at this point, it's always very dangerous. Because once the highest amplitude is exceeded or is being overcome, then it's going to create a lot of problem. It's going to be hazardous. So at this given point, we are going to have a deviation 
from the maximum amplitude. And that point where we have the maximum amplitude is actually this peak. So I'll be having the maximum amplitude at the peak right there. Now that peak where I have the maximum amplitude is also referred to as the point where I have what we call the resonant frequency. So in other words, the natural frequency is equal to the driving force at that point and is equal to the resonant frequency. So do not um, get this confused. Now, there is something I need you to know from this same graph. Knowing full well that the frequency at which this resonance occurs is a resonant frequency, you have to know that this is only being achieved as a result of the amount of driving force that was exerted on the oscillator, which is periodical. And meaning that we can only attain this by applying more energy by the driver. So in other words, resonance completely depends on more energy supplied to the oscillator. So you need to take note of that fact. More energy is supplied by the driver to attain resonance. Now we've been able to look at this, let's see a practical approach to resonance. Let's see how resonance can occur, how we can see this empirically in the laboratory. Now there is an experiment that helps us to able to see how resonance play out and that experiment is called the baton pendulum. The baton's pendulum. So we are going to see how this works, practically speaking. Let's look at this diagram. Yeah, I have a setup. I have a mass of an object right there attached to a string, then attached to this line with a given length. Then I have other bodies here. This one could be made of plastic or any other material. So they are also oscillators. Now they are attached to a given length of, uh, a, a given length of uh, string. Now each length are not the same. The length of this is not the same to this and it's not the same to this, and it's not the same to this, as well as this. Meanwhile, one out of the O5 oscillators, one out of the length of the O5, is equivalent to the length of this mass right there. Now, I need you to know again that the mass X here is taken as the driving object. Okay, so this is taken as a driving object. Now I want to see out of these five oscillators, which one will be will become the driven object out of them. Now the one that move in the pace of this mass X will become the driven object. So how does that play out? So watch this video, this short clip, and let's see how that is going to happen from the short clip. You will see in the short clip we have four objects here. Here we have uh, we have five objects right here. We have four oscillators and we have the driver right here. Now the driver
Now, the driver is this. Why I have the oscillator right here. Now, when I display the driver, when I display the driving object, it sets the other object into motion. You can see the objects are really moving right now. When the driver is moving. So it sets them into oscillation. But as time goes by, other objects, I mean, this, this, and this, they begin to slow them. They begin to slow them. Why the other one which is this one, which has corresponding length to the driving object. I mean, yeah, to the driving object. We be moving, is moving at the same pace as that of the driving object. You can see that. You can even see they are actually moving in phase. They are moving at the same time, in phase, in same direction. So this tells us that what is really playing out is that the frequency of this driving object is influencing this oscillator, setting it to move at the same pace with this other object. And that really tells us that the natural frequency of this oscillator is equivalent to the driving frequency of this driver. So in other words, we've been able to confirm and justify resonance with this experiment. And this is what we call the button experiment. Now, the question is, how can damping affect the frequency and the sharpness of the resonance? So we want to consider effect of damping on the frequency and the sharpness of the resonance. So let's see that. Well, the sharpness of the resonance greatly depends on the amount of damping on the oscillator. Meaning that the magnitude of damping on the oscillator goes a long way to determine how sharp the peak of the resonance will be. Considering the, ga the graph I gave you in the previous page or slide. Now, you need to know that if I have a light damping, the kind of sharpness I will have as regards the resonance will be completely different to when I have a heavy damping or a critical damping. So in other words, the higher the damping, the flatter the peak. The higher the damping, the flatter the peak of the resonance or of the maximum amplitude that is attained. And that's what we can see in this graph. Look at the graph very well. On the graph we have, on the vertical axis, the amplitude of first oscillation. And on the horizontal axis, we have the driving frequency. Now, you will notice that as the driving frequency increases and gets to the natural frequency of the oscillator, I have the highest point here. But if you look at the peak, you will see that this is a little bit flatter compared to the previous graph I gave you. That one is, the graph is sharper. You can go back, go back 
to check up the video again just uh, rewind in a way and check up and see that the first graph have a sharp edge than this other graph this one is a little bit flatter and this as a result of light damping that's why you have a light damping in this place but as the damping increases it becomes heavier you can see what happens again it becomes more flatter it becomes flatter again than that of light uh, damping so this is telling us that external factors like resistive force is greatly influencing the kind of resonance we attain at every given point in time in fact if i have critical damping it will be more it, it will be greatly flattened than what i have right here so right now we want to see application of resonance applications of resonance one of the application of resonance is its usage in uh, quartz crystal for timing in quartz crystal uh, crystal for timing that's one of its usefulness another one is for the production of ultrasound using piezoelectric crystal so it's also used uh, in the production of uh, ultrasound using piezoelectric crystal. We still have more applications. So you can, on your own, make more findings uh, for more application usage or uh, advantages of uh, resonance. So that will be uh, an assignment to you right there, which you can have uh, in the yellow shaded uh, uh, points here. So you can just do that, get at least three applications of uh, resonance. Okay, let's see disadvantages of resonance. Now, one of the greatest disadvantages of resonance, we have so many disadvantages of resonance, but one of the uh, greatest disadvantages is uh, in the collapse, I mean, the collapsing of uh, uh, structures constructing I mean constructions like uh, bridge structure like uh, building structure whatever structure if the consultants or the builders does not put this into consideration this will greatly play out the collapsing of the structure will greatly play out and that is why a column, I mean, a column of soldiers, while marching on a bridge of light span, I mean, long span, are advised to break their steps. This is the more reason. The reason is because their redeeming march might set up oscillations of dangerously large amplitude in the bridge structure if you have soldiers marching at the same time rhythmically it affects the oscillation of that bridge causing it to create a large amplitude and i've said it earlier on that when an amplitude is so great it becomes hazardous so it will affect the the, the structure of the bridge and that can result into the collapse of the bridge which is very very dangerous and so that is the more reason why soldiers marching on the bridge are advised to break their steps so you can do more research by getting more disadvantages we still have a lot of them so you can get like three adverse effects of resonance on your whole. At this point, we will be considering some questions. This question time. The first question have here, you can simply pause the video to take a look at the question and try to attempt the question on your own. 
with what you have learned so far, you should be able to answer this question. We have the next, I mean, the continuation of the question right here. This is a continuation of the first question. Then we have the second question. I have the second question. This is the second question. And here is the continuation of the second question. So at this point, we shall be calling it uh, a stop for oscillation. So this all uh, Cambridge is really expecting based on their syllabus is expecting from you. So yours is to solve more questions, answer more questions, and get more other facts to add to this. Uh, as far as those exercises I gave in between the videos are concerned. So you can just try to work on them and do something about those exercises. And with this, uh, you are sure uh, to have a best result. So we shall go to the end. Another thing, stay tuned.